All right, that will call the July 19th Middleton Tourism Commission meeting to order. It's 4.07 p.m. First item on the agenda is approval of the last meeting's minutes. Did you get a copy of that in the packet and have a chance to review it? Do you have anything to add to those minutes or questions about the minutes? I thought they were good. I'd make a motion to approve them as, as submitted. I'll second. All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 All right, the minutes are approved. Looks so like we've got uh, group updates next. Uh, congratulations, Mari. Congratulations, Mari. Yes. 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 yes, indeed. It's about that growing experience. <laughs> uh, the hotel events and staff reports. Um, you know, a lot of the same. Um, with me and the hotel side of things, we are busy, very busy with group. Business travel still is lagging well behind. You know, we've seen an uptick, as I mentioned at the last meeting, an increase about reviving local negotiated rates. So we have been uh, with some more traffic, which hopefully will lead to more room nights in the next uh, quarter, maybe by Q4 or Q1 next year. So that's really the missing piece right now. Leisure is doing fine, group is doing fine, business travel is done. Staffing. You said leisure is doing fine and group is doing fine? Yeah, leisure and group are doing fine. Yep. Especially the for-profit events. You know, there's still some, some corporations on the fence, um, you know, associations still a little bit on the fence, but uh, for-profit events came back strong as soon as the as soon as the, uh, the gathering restrictions were lifted, they were ready to start at the events. Again, so that's great. Yeah, we've been doing, we've been doing fantastic at the hotel over there. I just saw the recent star report. It looks like the neighboring hotels are doing pretty well too. So. That's what I've got for hotel updates. Yeah, are you um, kind of tied in with the school district and the stadium and how that's going to most likely they'll have um, tournaments and that type of thing starting next spring? That would be great for us. Yeah. That's for sure. I've, I've not been personally involved okay. in any of the stadium talks, um, but yeah, that'll definitely have an impact if we start listening tournaments here in Middleton. I mean, whenever whenever there's large tournaments at Redden Soccer Park in Verona, it feels Middleton. Right, so, right. You know, put that closer to us and even better. Yep. Yeah. yeah, it sounds like they're they're planning on um, completion in the spring and they already have a lot of the athletic groups out trying to get tournaments nice. here. So <clears throat> yeah, that's cool. That's yeah. Cool. Our sports commission, they're they know about the new addition at the high school, right? Who's, who's oh, the name of the team? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know about it? Good. Oh, I'm, I'm sure he's been in chomping talks. at the bit. Yeah. 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 Well, it's great to hear that they're after these clubs and after these organizations already before it's completed because, you know, it's going to be really a huge folly to wait. What else are you going to hear for that one? Um, I can uh, give you a little bit of an update on the STAR report. Yes, please. So I just got the June numbers. And so June of 2021, we were at 51.8% occupancy. And this year, at the same time, we were 74.2. So it's an increase of 43.7%. Um, the year to date rate, um, at this time last year, uh, this time being the end of June when the, okay. the report was, was done, we were at 32.5%. Um, this year, we're at 50 0.9%, so that's an increase of 56.5%. And the ADR, the average daily rate um, for this time last year was $75.12. <laughs> and this year it's 106. Uh, so that's an increase of 41.6. So, I mean, we finally made it over the 100, <laughs> yeah. which is, you know, definitely where we want to be uh, climbing to. And then revenue wise, um, 21 uh, in 20. 2021 till now, we've increased revenue by 139.8%. So, I mean, things are definitely looking better. One of the things that I thought was the most interesting was I was expecting a way higher, like crazy number for June because of the hockey. And mm -hmm. it wasn't, I mean, you know, yes, it was up 43%, but when you're looking back in years prior, I feel like we're kind of getting almost a little, summer's getting a little closer to normal. Yeah. Um, we're, we're edging towards there. So that, that to me was actually very good. Is the road taxes based on the 
the rate, right? It's the percentage of the rate in that. And then, yeah, okay, so let's, let's go up that. Yeah, 8%. Yeah, okay. It's capped so at 8%. those high rates. Right, yeah. yeah. Exactly. So that's all I had as far as hotels. Okay. So the next item is uh, the exterior painting update, Laura. Oh, yeah, sorry. I, I did want to bring up um, the tourism economic report. Sure. I, I noted here that we still haven't received it. Um, I reached out to Destination Madison, who collects the report for us. Um, I've spoken with them three times now. So I, uh, I spoke with their PR communications director twice, just by email. And then I was actually at a board meeting last week. And I spoke to Ellie, who's their mm -hmm. CEO. And I don't know if they've even received their numbers. So there, there are some conversations happening about how things were rolled out this year because they, they automatically pushed it off. The state pushed it off a month. And it's just been, in my opinion, snowballing from there. So by the time we get these numbers, nobody's going to want to report them because they'll be over a year old. But we'll still want them. So that's right now, all I'm saying is it was one of the um, action items. So I do need a motion to uh, move that report to August pending its arrival. Somebody can do that for me. I'll make a motion to move this agenda item to August pending its arrival. Thank you. Second. All of those in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> motion passed uh, next is the update from laura okay so the verdict is there is lead in the paint ah. um thanks to kevin for recommending going to the wisconsin occupational health labs because they confirmed um it had it became out like a result of 1.3 which meant very little to me i was just like i'm assuming no traces an okay amount and they said anything over 0.5 is unacceptable so we, we were we were above that um so i'm overachievers feel <laughs> feeling like we definitely need to go with a paint company that is certified in lead painting um and so that pretty much means that genesis was the only one i had prior to that so i'm ruling out um epic and the other B and E um, reached out to two other companies. Jade Painting uh, was out last week and was able to provide us with an estimate. Um, if you remember, Genesis came in a little bit under sixteen grand. Jade came in at a little over twenty-seven grand. Um, I'm waiting for another estimate. Um, from another company, Magna, that I had come out last week. He said it was going to only take him a day, but and I've been following up and nothing. So I'm really curious to just because obviously those two are very different. So I, I do want that third one. Obviously, we need a third one anyway. But I, I mean, I feel like we can't even compare these two right now. Did anything stand um, out that one was going to do that the other didn't list or? No, I, I think, I mean, Mark and I kind of had the conversation. I think Genesis is just a larger company. I think they have this jade painting, I, they don't have a huge team. So I think for them, and they were going to take the lead painting very seriously, obviously Genesis right. was too, but I think it was going to be a bigger undertaking for them because I don't think it's something they do on the regular. The only um, upside was they could have gotten us on the schedule faster. Jade, um, yeah. yeah, Genesis is looking at late September. Yes, oh. I confirmed that today. So still, I'm, I'm going to be happy if we can even get it done this year. Yeah. So um, that's kind of where I'm at. Sorry, I'm scrolling through. Is it, um, what was Genesis at? So Just was, under 16 grand. Okay. So what was it? And the, the, we're waiting for one more. Do we don't want to wait another full month, do you, to get on the schedule? Or oh, no. Do you want to bring up the agenda? Oh, sure. Yes, I could do that. Um, we're just looking at Jose. Big picture of Jose. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but the second thing, too, is we realized we should probably have the uh, antique wagon out front tested. Oh, yes. Um, it was donated, we're thinking, within the last 20 years. Um, and, they, I mean, they had painted it all up and given it to us. I'm not worried about the green paint on the outside, hopefully. But, I mean, I think that that's relatively new. Um, but we should probably get that tested. And then what we would have to do then is actually go back to whichever company you choose and say, could you also add this 
Mm -hmm. So no matter, even if we go with Genesis, it'll end up have to be more because I feel like we need to get the way done. I mean, I'm hoping. I, um, I was just going to tell you guys, um, I'm digging deep on my memory on this one, but we paid like eight or $10,000 to have that wagon restored. I, that was that just before you started maybe Mari? Oh no, it was in rough oh, shape when I was hired three years yeah, ago. I'd... So what did we, we paid a ton of money to have somebody professionally restore that I know. Well, then there won't be any lead when we get the test. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. So I'm trying that's, to figure out because I think it was like naked wood. Like it, it was an eyesore. I mean, it we can. I, it was an actual wagon. So I uh, for uh, the rail. So they wouldn't have made it, you know. The testing didn't cost that much, did it? It's $30. No, so that's, yeah. yeah we, it's worth $30 getting, to just know that yeah, the wagon. Yeah. Especially yeah. the amount of kids that crawl on that. Right. Yeah. Right. That's, so. Well, hopefully not for how much money we paid. <laughs> <laughs> um. That's good to know, Corey. I'll see if I can find anything in the files on that. I thought it was donated as is. I don't remember that was before my time. But I was with... Where did it come from? Do you know that? Um, that's so it was donated. Out, yeah, a man reached out to me on Facebook once and I posted a photo and said his family is the one who donated it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, okay, so for the painting, I would say what we need is a motion to lead, uh, lead test the wagon. Um, and do we want to talk about the construction part? So because there's lead found in, found in the paint, for us to remove those boards and replace those boards. And by the way, we're going to get to you very next. Oh, I'm, I'm feeling good about, <laughs> I mean, 5,000 okay. compared to 27. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, the boards, because there's lead found in it, we can't just have me go over there and pull a board and put a board. It has to be done by a lead certified contractor. Neither of these companies do that work. And so from what I understand, we have to have all the lead completely removed, bring somebody in, replace the boards, and then paint. Oh, no. And, and because I, from what I understand, that neither of these two companies are certified because that's a different certification to do lead-based contracting work or something. Well, if the lead's working. taken up, then there's no more lead. Right, but <laughs> what it does is it interrupts the schedule. Oh. Um, do, do they, they might have somebody they work with to do that. Yeah. Yes, and I actually asked Genesis yeah. if they could exactly. recommend a, yeah. a lead-certified contractor just to see what they say. It's not a huge repair. Uh, I, I don't think there would be any issue in getting it done before we need it painted. I, and I, but... Cost-wise, I, I have no idea. You might idea. be surprised when they start poking around and mm -hmm. all the sock I did not see. Don't even talk about that. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> so at this point, um, at this point from the commission, we just need permission to lead, lead test the wagon, to get a quote for painting the wagon um, and with or without the lead and it will lead test first. Mm -hmm. um, and if you guys are okay with like whatever Magna comes in, I can't imagine they're going to be less than Genesis. So we'll go ahead and get that third bid because we're required to. But if the commission is okay with just approving Genesis, we can get on their schedule. And but that is with the understanding it is going to exceed 16,000 because we will have this contracting work to do and the wagon, whether the wagon has lead paint or not, it needs painted. Um, so if you guys are all right with that moving forward, otherwise we have to come back in August and we have to wait another month. If you, if you feel like we have to wait for the thing, well, I just can't imagine they're going to be less expensive. I think it's possible, but, oh, you think so? I mean, I feel like Genesis is pretty popular. I think they're yeah. very well known. I think a lot goes into their advertising. So I, you know, in a situation like this, can we do a separate zoom call with everybody on to approve something in a couple of weeks, even before the next commission meeting? So in case of special meeting. Yeah. So we don't have, I have to be posted like a 10 minute, would everybody agree to that? A 10 minute meeting of approving whichever bid so that we could, sure. We can try to get on people's schedules. I just don't want it to start raining and then we have to push this off for another eight, 10 months. Well, yeah, when well, we have more information, I think that would be the way to go is get this stuff and then I'm, I have no problem. Okay, I mean, so lead, lead testing, a motion on lead testing the wagon. 
and then continuing with our bid project for exterior painting. Does the, the wagon need painting even if there isn't lead in? Yes, okay. it's, it's starting to splinter. Okay. It looks really cool, but I, I don't know if little kiddos yeah. climbing it. It's going to start flaking on. Yeah. yeah, it already has. I guess. So it's got to be painted anyway. Yeah. Um, and and the, whoever we hire would be want you think would be willing to take on a project like that also i would be shocked if they weren't i mean it's yeah it's pretty small in the whole scheme of the whole mm -hmm. the exterior building so okay well i'll make a motion that we pursue uh lead testing on the wagon and the and then get a bid for what it would cost to either remove the lead and paint or paint and we'll wait and hear what, what's the name of the company? Magna. Magna, when they come back with their bid. Do you have to reach out to Genesis and Magna? And we're probably not going with the other one, but to get a bid on, to have them look at the wagon too, because we want the same company to do it, I'm assuming, right? Yeah, probably. Okay. But it could be as easy as just sending a picture. Yeah. I don't know if they'd actually have to stop. And, oh. and then, and for you to get the estimates on what that additional work would be. Mm -hmm. And and then after that is have a special separate Zoom media, a social social media yeah. public Zoom posted. Okay, so I'm going to read this back to you. <laughs> Kathy makes a motion <laughs> to pursue lead testing um, on the wagon and get a bid to remove the lead paint and paint or just paint it. Um, and also wait on bids for uh, Genesis and Magna on contract work because that needs to be added in. Mm -hmm. um, because of the, the lead testing, um, painting the wagon. And we'll add schedules in there because we'll have to discuss that as well. Does that um, sound okay? okay. I'm, I'm just, you know, down the road when people read back on this and it's this contract work, it might be nice to just include the little blurb replacing wood or replacing needed boards and stuff so that they can see that this is how, this is what kind of contract Okay. Just as a little extra information. Absolutely. And then do you also need to add in, um, yeah, the special. Okay. And um, schedule a special Zoom so, um, approval yep. meeting. Meeting to approve, the, to, to select the contractor. Okay. We'll get on that right away. Once the lead was found, this became a much longer process. Everybody right, thank you were doing for, so well. Thank you for hanging in there. And thank you, Laura. She's been running around trying to find con and running around the depot with the contractors. Mm -hmm. We're doing a second on that motion. Yes, we just need a second, please. Does anyone want to second Kathy's motion? You're all on mute. Yes. I'm Thank second. you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. On to the strolling jazz, Stone Horse Green. Grand Open Grand Alley. Yes. Right. Matt, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure, yeah. We actually have someone in person for this. Yeah. Um, it's like it's 2019. Um, <laughs> hello, uh, everyone on the Scary. Well, that would be in 2019. I guess probably not. But uh, I'm Matt Strohsteiner, new with the city, the uh, downtown marketing and events coordinator. I don't know if anyone had a chance to um, look over this uh, doc here. Thanks, Mari, for helping out. Um, it. Um, so I'm new again, like I was saying, to Middleton, but um, this has been what Abby and I have been really, really focusing on since I got here um, and it just feels like from someone coming in here this feels like a big deal like working with the art lit lab art lit labs kind of time twister has been really super fun and exciting to see all of the things that we can bring and do and having a two-day kind of like festival to open this place which i'm sure you've all heard about for years right you've been it's like i i'm the johnny come lately here like you guys heard of the stone horse green and you guys are like yeah we've been working on it for years but um 
it's really cool to think of it opening up um, with a real boom. Um, this every urban green space, outdoor space I've looked at um, elsewhere is just, I mean, anytime you go to a city, it just feels like you're in a, a real community in a real city. And I think to, to get it started the right way, um, we're having the, the Stroll and Jazz Fest. Um, it's gonna be a mix of musicians and artists. And we're trying to get um, a headlining musician, which would be a jazz artist from probably either, um, most likely Chicago. So we're hoping to use some of these funds to market outside of Madison um, to try to bring as many people as possible here. And then that would kind of open up the floodgates for any future event here. Like, you know, I, I can remember places in Indianapolis I went where I was like, oh, that was a really cool event space. I'm, let me check what, I, what is there if I'm in town there. You know, mm -hmm. it's just things that you remember. And it's really cool to think that this wasn't, I mean, it's not here yet. Actually, it's dirt. Right? Mm -hmm. um, but, um, you know, this has never been here. And now for anyone who comes here for the, for the first time, they're going to just think that this is Middleton. And I think that's really exciting. And, um, you know, we were going over the, the budget for it and everything. And obviously it would, it would be a great help. And I would um, appreciate every cent um, we could use to um, both, you know, staff it with the Art Lips Lab, um, artists that are going to be there, and the musicians. Yes, on my timer with the Oscars. <laughs> and, uh, um, so yeah, I, I just, I think it's a big deal. I know I'm a, a new person and it's directly related, related to my job. So I have a conflict of interest, but um, I feel like a big, a big event to open it up is a, um, a good idea. Well, thank you for coming today in person. So as you guys can see, this will be September 16th through 17th. It's a Friday and Saturday downtown. Um, the tentative schedule right now has evening events on Friday and all day events pretty much on Saturday with an opening in the morning and the headliner starting around 7 p.m. That time, I'm sure, you know, we're not sure exactly where that's going to be yet. Um, they are asking for $2,000 from the, oh, whoops, excuse me. Yeah, $2,000 from the tourism grant, which as it's written right now can be used towards marketing. And $3,000 from the Destination Partnership Grant, which as is written now can be used for things like kids' activities and festivals and music and, and talent and that kind of thing. Um, does anybody have any questions, comments, uh, anything from that? 3,000 is the up max for the Destination Partnership. Right? Yes. That's why I think I read that. Um, the $5,000 artists, that's not part of the Art Lit, lit Group. This is something different because this wasn't, wasn't the idea of the art lit is, lit is to get local artists to give, give them an opportunity to come in and be paid a fair scale. And, and the 5,000 is um, for, some, for a headliner, that's completely different than the art lit, right? No, they would be, um, they are the ones handling the headliner as well. So they would, because um, there's going to be all sorts of artists and poets and bands that they are, doing and then we're working with with them for the headline yeah it just seems unusual that that because they are well, how i understand it and looking at their website it's it's more about the local mm -hmm. providing and um, opportunities for local artists is how i so then I, like, I think in my mind the opportunity is if they got a headliner from out of town mm -hmm. and got people from out of town to come here okay. then that benefits the art the local artists okay. by exposing their art to mm -hmm. tourists and other people and and right but mine mine was that they were pay, trying to make sure that the artists were getting paid for uh, so fair scale and everything and the five thousand seems like here's here's our local artists here's this you know and I was just wondering how the how that comes comes across to have one that's getting so much compared to what the local artists might be might be receiving of course they're a bigger draw no doubt but um the headliner is still TBD, so it, it could still be someone from Western Wisconsin, or um, it's not. Yeah, I'm not, it's it's not necessarily you know someone with top hat from Chicago. You know, like I'm not sure. We're not sure exactly yet. Um, that was one of the options we discussed. But yeah, I think that's a great point that it's 
this is still probably, I'm sure any of these other bands are going to be extremely appreciative of the exposure they're going to get playing in front of whoever the band is. Right. And the extra cost is travel, it's food, it's right. lodging. You've got to cover all that when they're on the road for you. you know? Absolutely. So. Oh, I've got to see if I do, but thank you. And then I was looking at the um, where this would be. There's the social media part of it, mm -hmm. but all the print would be all local. I mean, it's like Cap Times, mm -hmm. the State Journal, the Public, Public Radio. Those are all local. That's not like for tourism. That's not really going to draw in people. Public Radio isn't just local. Public it's not WART. Sorry, what? WORT. Oh, he Wisconsin actually does call out with some Public Radio. Yeah, yeah. okay. That's that's the whole state. Okay. So I was looking through his. Uh, by the way, if I'm ever like jumping in when I'm not supposed to, remember I'm new, so tell me, <laughs> tell me what my roles are. Um, but when I was looking at his marketing plan, I was actually really impressed. Okay. I don't know if we've actually had an event that had a marketing plan quite like this. Okay. So to me, um, I feel like he is covering enough the social. I mean, I would definitely. He doesn't give numbers. Mm -hmm. That will be part of your ROI and your follow-up report that you'll have to show to us. Absolutely. So if you want money again next year, <laughs> yeah. my suggestion is, is that you go heavy on digital Absolutely. Um, because the print ads aren't, aren't reaching beyond. No. I mean, let's, let's, let's face it. That's just not, that's not how it goes. Um, but the other things that he was calling out here, uh, I mean, I haven't even heard of Pool of Rock. But I looked it up and I was like, okay, good work. <laughs> so, so anyway, I feel like his marketing plan is pretty strong. And this is this is a first time event. So first of all, I mean, I'm hoping for the best, yeah. but it usually takes three years. Yeah. So, so it's going to take a good amount of support um, from everybody to get this event off the ground if they want to continue having Strolling Jazz being the downtown centerpiece event. Um, one of the things that I mentioned to Matt is that I, if I were them, I would choose one event a year that they come to us for a grant, because we have stated many times before that we weren't going to be funding every Stone Horse Green event that comes along. But if there is one signature event that they're going to put a lot of marketing effort into, and that's the one that, I mean, we could, we could help actually develop into a tourism event. Mm -hmm. Um, and with an, I mean, as soon as he gets the, uh, the talent booked, we can start helping on our end too with the yeah. newsletters and everything else that we do. So I would, uh, but he can't do that until he knows how much money has worked. Right. So I, would, I would say too, it takes three years to get an event to have legs if you do it right. Though. Exactly. So this means, first of all, this is, this is my perspective of things from the business world. This is very, very big deal to those, those downtown businesses mm -hmm. and and uh, I had a board meeting today, and they're all very, very, very excited about you and the, um, the, the strolling event and Stonehurst Green as a whole. So, um, you know, there's there's huge opportunities. Also, even if this year um, we don't get a bunch of people coming in, in my mind, local residents are the biggest advocates for getting to a tourists here because they are going to then say hello family and friends this event is this weekend every year you've got to come come and stay bring your families mm -hmm. you know so I think it's really important that you do it right year one if you want it to be the signature event and start getting legs so well, is this blending okay we have the stone horse green grand opening and we have done strolling jazz for a number of years now but putting these two together, like when Mari said, that coming back mm -hmm. another, you know, for one event a year, is that going to be the Stone Horse Green part of it, or is that going to be supporting the the strolling jazz part of it again? I see. I I think the two of them together, because to do the grand opening and having the signature uh, performer is one thing, and it just is different to me on how the uh, strolling jazz had been performed put together before. Mm -hmm. That's the only difference I see, because I can see if we're going to have a big grand opening, yes, but it, to put them together, it's just kind of, I haven't quite got my head around that yet, how this is going to work. Sure. I think it was, it's mostly just kind of serendipitous timing, really. Like, uh -huh. the fact that this event that people know already, that maybe we could make a little bit more pronounced is 
just happens to be well a week after we have to let our sod rest. So yeah, that's summer. right. But I don't know. To me, it feels like good time. Mm -hmm. um, well, going forward, then would this be? A, we would try to promote a big event at Stoner's Green as the Strolling Jazz, or is Strolling Jazz going to go back to its regular format where they have all around town different performers? And we actually right now still have. So like right now, we still Friday night. Um, the places that are confirmed are Stone Horse Green, but also the Mustard Museum, the Senior Center, the uh, Louisiana's, and maybe Breaks or um, the Historical Museum. So there's still um, a few other places just for that first night. Um, and then Saturday would be the big, the big day at Stone Horse Green. Okay, that's the headline on Saturday evening. Right, around seven. Okay, but the grand opening is actually Friday, right? No, it's Saturday morning. Saturday, right? Um, I think that's what I saw. Yeah, the 16th and 17th. Yeah. Um, but the actual, she, she's talking about the ceremony where they're like, welcome to the North Right. Yeah, Thank that's, you, everybody. Sorry. Sorry. Saturday Here's morning. a Absolutely. fantastic yeah. musician. We want everybody here. <laughs> yeah. They have a whole day's worth of events. He just hasn't been prepared to like share that out quite yet because they they need to know how much money they have before they start. <laughs> Doing that is kind of where we're at. I feel like if 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 you don't go big with this first one, people it's going to be great for Middletonians, but we're not going to ever get enough popularity or being known well enough across the city to draw people from Sun Prairie out to go listen to some jazz in Middleton and spend money downtown. Mm -hmm. Is this going to produce room nights this year? Probably not, but it's a huge addition to downtown Middleton, right? Yeah. And it's a big deal. There's, there's, I've talked about this before over by my hotel. There's no nightlife. There's yeah. no nightlife. You know, mm -hmm. so like this is a big deal and it eventually could help me and help the hotel bring in room nights. Um, this year, probably not, but it could be huge. You're going to be at every single library, coffee shop, bar in the city. I mean, people all over Madison, downtown Madison love jazz, right? You know, and if you've got a good enough headliner, I think, I think it can be successful. So I, I think that, it, you know, it, it, it is important for this first year, critical, really. Are you, we well, and if you're looking to reimagine what stolen jazz is in Middleton, okay. like this is this is the way to do it. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and awesome. and in, in the way I was reading this grant and just listening to him talk about it, Stone, the grand opening of Stone Horse Green is definitely part of this because how can we not have the first event mm -hmm. in Stone Horse Green and not make a big deal out of this right. huge park? Right. And so, really, in a way, uh, Stone Horse Green is getting to piggyback off of this event more mm -hmm. than the other way around. Right. Okay. Because we really, as a city, can't afford two giant stellar events back to back in in the late fall at this moment. Right. Um, and they would compete with one another. So this is a great way for these two big things to piggyback off of one another for free earned media, yeah. which I, I expect that we will get. And I'll also help him in any way that he needs and, and talk and talk through the marketing aspect of it, especially on a local level too. But his team's pretty good guys. Mm -hmm. Like I'm, I'm okay with it. <laughs> so the trolley this year will be on its regular schedule. Are they thinking of hiring an extra trolley to do any of the church? Uh, no one has talked to me at all about the transportation part of that, but we will have to talk about if we're going to, um, if we need to reroute the trolley mm -hmm. because of Parmenter or something, then we'll have to talk about, and which we can, because for the uh, Middleton Art Walk, we rerouted the trolley just a smidge past downtown so that we weren't driving down Terrace. And how I handled that was I created a new landing page. So that day when you clicked on the QR, mm -hmm. the QR code, it went to um, a landing page with the new map and descriptions. Um, and of course, we'll be talking to the hotels too. Mm -hmm. so. Well, like next year when they're doing a, a kind of the event trolleys, that would be something definitely I think you want to have part of it. Something like that. Right, and part of the partnership grants next year is uh, we're hoping to include a transportation component, which is still in flux because I have to talk to John about like what he thinks, yeah, <laughs> right? Right. But that would be one of the things that we're hoping to offer next year is for an event like this, if we wanted to do a trolley running, running the routes to the the hotels that night, especially since it might be in an evening where people can you know 
be enjoying a cocktail outside. Sure. So um, that's definitely something we can look at next year too. That's when it's that's when it becomes stumble and jazz. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and when people were, went outside of what what the route is now, next year they they'd be able to take the trolley with every route. They want. Exactly, there won't be a route. Yeah. We can do whatever we want. We can have it stop right at Stonehorn Green, <laughs> three different places. Yeah, but that doesn't. <laughs> It can go by the, but it can go further out in Middleton. It can pick people up here or there, you know, right? Like they want to pick people up at Lakeview or whatever. It would, it would be up to the event planner and yeah. what they think would best serve the event. Well, that's right. I mean, but it's um, not because not, I would yeah. say if the trolley route is going to be past half an hour, as we have been able to prove, no one will ride it. Mm -hmm. And so we can't, I, I would never suggest it becoming public transportation for the entire city of Middleton mm -hmm. because nobody would ever ride yeah. it if they understand. What I'm saying but, is, if you have an event, people want to get to the event, and they stay for the event, and then they, you know, then they can go back again. Not that they're looking to get on and half hour and make a loop or anything, but just uh, get to it and stay as long as they want. Not that it has to be a half hour. But, but yeah, that's all part of a different plan for another. Year. Okay, all right. I just question. The, the cost of the, the headliner, no, based on, I know doing Sterling Jazz for the last couple of years and how on a shoestring this stuff has been, but you know, it's, I'm just, just putting my thoughts out. <laughs> so, and especially with, the, what's it called, the something lit? Artlet Lab. Artlet Lab, and they've always been on shoestring also, <laughs> you know. I think this is a really good opportunity to, if, the headliner is drawing people in, it's only going to benefit, benefit the art lit lab. Oh, yeah. I, know. I, know. I know. It's hard to <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I don't know if anybody on Zoom has any other feedback. I, I am happy to say I, I would love to see. So we have, a motion. Money. we have a motion from Kate to grant the full amount. Mm -hmm. Okay, so open it up to discussion. Sorry, Jen, I'm just jumping in right now. Um, does anyone online have any more discussion to add? Do you still need a second? Uh, as, as long as nobody has any discussion, then yes, we can open it up for a second. Um, I, the only thing I was going to say, you know, obviously this, this is like geared towards locals. You could eventually be an overnight deal it's not really a tourism thing today or this year i don't think you know is it appropriate for us to be funding over half of the budget i guess is really my only question um for the group overall i mean the grant's great i mean just throw it in there i mean the event looks like it's going to be awesome but just you know looking just straight at numbers And Mari, you're going to be helping with the marketing end also, right? With um, your channels. I'll assist him however he needs, but it'll also appeal, appeal up here on Facebook, Instagram, um, our tourism e-newsletter. We send out two a month. So it's whenever I get the information from you, you can pin each one. Um, and then uh, obviously on our website and calendar. And um, yeah. All well, you, and home. you have a... a you know, your market's the ones that's going to be bringing in tourists. I mean, the ones that you're sending this out to a lot of them are overnight stays. You know, so, kind of yeah, my target demographic is generally outside of um, mm -hmm. Middleton and Madison. Like, for instance, Facebook, we have, I don't know, 34-ish thousand, 34,000-ish. Uh, uh, 34, and I think right around five are in Dane County. So that's why when people ask me to post things on Facebook, I'm like, I'm really not your person. Yeah. Ask the chamber. They have a way bigger reach in Dane County than mm -hmm. I do. <laughs> Um, so yes, my targeting will be the tourism to, um, aspect of this, of course. Um, it, but I do, I mean, there, there's a niche for this and if we get it out early enough, we, I'm not, we're not going to fill out hotels. Plus that Saturday is a whole major game. Right. And so it's going to be very difficult for us to even gauge whether or not like there's any overnight stays yeah, this time, right? If looking for a last minute room on a Saturday of a September football game, then I can find a hotel available in Middleton. They're all going to be sold out by then on Saturday night for sure. So 
Well, you can hope that it's the game is early enough in the day that well, the there's so much going on now on Friday night. Though yeah. people might, if they come in early and they're like, "Well, there's something going on in Mills." Yeah. Um, I, I mean, it could it could end up helping us in a way too. Sure. But so yes, his tourism and his marketing will be Dane County and beyond. Mine is beyond. And I'll just help him in anything he asks for. Okay. Did anyone else have any um, comments or wanted to respond to Corey's comment? I want to make sure that everybody gets a chance. I will say, when I worked at a university, five thousand dollars is not unheard of for a talent or a speaker. So oh, we paid thirty. I mean, I, just for like, our for like two hours for our sub sample, it was thirty five hundred. Yeah. And so, I mean, and that's so to me, that was not like on a Wednesday. That, yeah, that wasn't the part of this that I was at all surprised about. Well, I just know how it so. was run and how long it's just running on you trying to, to make it. Although, like you said, I mean, if we're going to reimagine how something's going to go, we're going to have to put some investment in it. I would really love to see a fall event in Middleton. So that's where I'm coming from on this. We've got two things going on in August. You know, we have Buster Days in the beginning, and then it, it bookends with um, Good Neighbor Fest. But both of those are very localized events. Mm -hmm. I mean, do people enjoy them? I had family coming in at Buster Days, and we went, and they thought it was hilarious. Um, but does it fill our hotels? No, those events don't fill our hotels. There's a reason we don't actually give them grant money anymore. Um, this has a potential to bring something in in September, if they choose September every year. It's okay if you don't, but in that fall, in that fall spectrum, that um, would bring a, um, a bring an audience to town, especially. Uh, I don't know. For me, sip and sample is great, and it's it's really fun. But that also is not a tourism draw. People aren't going to drive here from Iowa oh, or not. wherever for sip and sample, and so having having a festival in town that I can push, and and. From an umbrella standpoint, like in the visitor guide, when I'm talking about festivals year round, we kind of need them year round. That's why I'm such a supporter of Bach Fest, because it's a festival in winter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like, whatever Kevin wants, I will like, I'll, I'll be giving away um, free tickets for that for two months if I can get people here in the winter. And, yeah. and it's such a fun event. It's, I went for the, my first time, have this space now, okay, my first time last year. And it was a, <laughs> oh my gosh, last. It is so much fun. And I went this year and I get hit in the face with a fish and look at, it's supposed to bring luck. Look at me, I just got promoted. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, it's a real thing. You gotta write him a thank you. Well, this, so, it's kind of... so back to the grant, sorry. <laughs> I, I feel like this is an excellent opportunity for us to try to promote a festival in town during a time of year when we really don't have anything. Um, we are not committed to funding this every year. They have to come back with a report and a plan every single time. This is a question I have, because Sip and Sample, you sell tickets too to help defray costs of like bands and stuff and whatnot. The Good Neighbor Fest, they have a band, they sell beer, they help defray the costs. Box Fest, they get their entertainment, they, they sell, they have tickets and stuff. This, if we're trying to make this an event, there's not, nothing, nothing coming back in. I mean, we can, $5,000 for entertainment is not, I mean, there's no way of defraying any of those costs. I and mean, if we do that every single year, I mean. I think though, like, that's, it's, it's getting, it's, yeah, yeah, supporting the business, the business of, and the hotels. And then if, yeah, if we as, the I know everything is head and beds, but head and beds don't happen the first time you, you try. It just doesn't. What's, it's the, not what's the capacity of Stone Orange Green? Does anybody know that? It's not, it's, well, they open well, the street. Isn't that they're difficult when they close the street, street too? Like, yeah. okay. it's probably a lot more than the property even seems to look. Yeah, you can put any, an, okay. any number. In. Well, I need to have people wander <laughs> around too. I think it's, I think it's, I, just, I, I think that it's, it's supporting the businesses, tax revenue, yeah. maybe um, revenue from the hotel room nights, um the publicity of the community as a whole oh yeah so not just this event but you know people right. will see the downtown people may come more often um and i think that there's there's a time and place for 
a carnival and this is a festival. Yeah. So there's just, there's a very big difference between what a good neighbor fest looks like and what this should look like Mm -hmm. with the beer tents and this, you know. um, Well, I'm just saying every year, if they're looking for the headliner, it's going to, it's going to have to have a funding somewhere. And and to your point, you know, I I think tourism's got a role in getting Stonehenge Street off the ground. You know, whether we have a year in funding it, I don't think so, because heads and beds is what. Well, well, and I've made it very clear. We, if we can't afford to right. fund storm right. or screen events yeah. oh, right. because it's not a revenue stream for us right. and mm-hmm. we have to bring revenue into the city and to fund ourselves right it's it's not a revenue stream and it's not that's it's 99 percent of the time not going to be a tourism yeah. event no. um but right. this it, could be right and ev- i mean every board i've ever worked on where we start an event I mean, if we were even in the black the first year, we were throwing a party. Mm -hmm. Um, It really, it's going to take a few years to find out if this is going to work. I would rather throw $5,000 at a jazz fest to see if it's going to work than the nine years we spent trying to get the trolley to work. (laughs) I mean, it's, it's, it's a different kind of charm that you can bring to a city and, um, and a promotion. And part of our role is tourism development. Mm -hmm. And this is how you develop. Um, and quite honestly, I, I don't feel like five grand is that huge of a task um, if it turns out to be what it's going to be. But again, you're not getting it every year without proving something. Yeah. Um, that's that's going to have to be, you know, we're making to, that very clear. Excited to prove it. Um, but I mean, I, I just see a lot of potential in this. As the person who was doing the marketing for the city, mm-hmm. um, it would have been, I mean, it's going to be a lot of fun to, mm-hmm. to throw out there. And I've already hired a freelance photographer to cover at least a few hours of the event, like four or five. We're trying, that's why I was trying to work sure. out with you on scheduling. Before we get to the stumble part of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want them to, I want them to shoot the headliner, but I also want the, fu- the family fun activities beforehand, yeah. right? Right. Um, he lives in Madison, so he can, you know, come early and leave and, and that kind of thing. Because I'm thinking, how am I going to market this next year? You know, this this first year, we're going to need the photography and everything so that next year, when we have word of mouth and we try to get quotes from people on what they thought, whether it's performers or people attending, if there's a way for you or somebody to go around and getting that, um, I'm going to try to be here. So let's have a board meeting out of town that week. Well, I'm, I'm going to make it back. And... Um, I, I just, I feel like there's a lot of potential here. So that's, that's my shit. Don't get me wrong. I am hoping for really great, great things. I just, I thought, just be aware, $5,000 is something we just don't give away lightly. Oh, and, <laughs> and we're, you know. And we need you to keep us in check. Yeah. And so, anyway, I'm all, you know, I just, I want this to, to go well. It's just, I'm skeptic by nature. And I just want to make sure <laughs> Be very honest, but I think you know the past events have been great, and this one I'm sure will be even better. So I did not think five thousand would be. It's just some platter. Otherwise, I would have asked for like twenty. Yeah, <laughs> so we would have heard it. <laughs> so, anyway. Well, there's been a motion made. Is there a second? Mm. <laughs> He's on the fence. Do we need further discussion? Sorry, my phone keeps ringing. So every time it does, my Bluetooth shuts off. So I like uh, keep hearing it. So do we have a motion on the table or or where are we there at? Is. You know, I'm I'm in favor of giving it a shot. I Like I said, I'm just, I'm really not sure on like the amount, like when we do $5,000, that's like our maximum amount that we give to a really big event. Like it would be an event that we would give to um USA hockey for instance like you know I think we even gave them more but like events of that caliber so I think that's probably really like guess the only thing that I'm held up on um I I don't know I I'd be curious to see what everyone thinks I mean everything you're saying is making sense I'll be in the first to admit when this I saw this grant I was in I was I was a no I mean it it really comes down to that we've already funded a lot of money to Stone Horse Green, um, I don't know, forty thousand dollars plus. I think we're at at this point um, that we've helped for the park because we saw the um, the 
you know, we saw that it could become a generation or a generator for the hotels, you know, and this is an event that we're looking at funding because we feel like it could be a generator for the hotels. So it's, you know, I just wonder how much more of that really we want to do. Um, you know, and, and I think that's probably, I guess, where I'm held up. I mean, everything looks really organized. The event looks like it's, you know, going to be great. I, I'm a local, so I'm like, yeah, this looks awesome. Um, I'm just trying to put my feet in the shoes of the hoteliers to, to think if they would agree. And, and, and that's the part I just don't know. Sorry, not to drag this grant discussion on any longer. <laughs> Um, is there an amount that we all feel comfortable then approving rather than the 5,000 then? Because it doesn't seem like nobody wants to pull the trigger and second that motion. Well, one thing, you know, Corey, you said about being more than half. What if we went 4,500? It's just not a lot, huge difference, but it's it's half. Well, it, I guess the real question is, is we're July and we've only got four meetings left. Where are we sitting at with the funds remaining in these accounts? I can tell you. Because I think that really is the other thing that plays a part into it. If there's potential of other stuff coming along, and I'm guessing this is actually going to be pulled out of this year's budget, obviously, because it's this year. Yeah, because it's this year, yeah. that helps. Because, okay, Laura can jump in. I think we only have two, two grant requests. One is 2023. So it'll be paid out in 2023. Yeah, yeah. both of them. It's the so library. I don't think we have anything left to pay out for this year. And we have over 14,000 left in destination partnership grants and 21 in tourism. Now, I, I ran this report yesterday and Cassell wasn't working. So this could be mm -hmm. off 5,000. But oh. that's, okay. I mean, we still, we have the funds. We could give 5,000. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think like where I'm at with that is with knowing that I would second it. I just, just to be like kind of clear, I, I kind of feel like at this point, tourism has done its part though with Storm Horse Green, you know, and then, you know, we've, at least I guess in my opinion, I'm not speaking for everybody, but um, you know, like I said, we've really helped and put a lot of money into that because we saw what the potential of it and see what the potential of it is. So, um, you know, I, I think we could, you know, help kind of get it going. Um, so I guess I, I would second whatever the motion, I think the motion. You're was. seconding the first, the full amount that Kate had put out. Yeah. Yeah. Just knowing, I mean, knowing what we have <laughs> left, I think, I, I don't feel like we're going to use all those funds up on everything else. Um, so, I mean, I guess based on that. Um, it's a rebuilding here. Be my second, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Unless somebody else wants to second other on the marketing portion, which is kind of what we've done with a lot of events in the past. Right. You know, we aren't committing to a multi-year contract. That's right. That's right. Okay. Okay. A second okay. from Corey. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All right. Motion passes. Five K. Thank you. Congratulations, sir. <laughs> Thanks for the putting that together. That was very well. You just didn't want to see my push over there. <laughs> <laughs> I'll follow up with you on next steps because I'm not sure if I have to have this signed by certain people where we can just what we've done in the past. Yeah. It's been a while, guys. <laughs> Also, make sure you circle back with me too. I, I, I'll work with DMBA to see also what they see happen um, over that weekend. And, you know, next year, there may be something that we can sponsor with something that's helping our business be down there. So, that's great. Yeah. Well, so and, some trackability. Yeah. Well, and with DMBA, if I were you, I'd create one or two social posts, share it out to them, and say, okay, like cloth and metal. On this date, can you, 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 and you share this post? You, you, and you share this post on another date, and then kind of get more of a, a network. Yes, exactly, because they have a much further reach throughout Dane County in a totally different way than we do. Okay. Um, because downtown boutiques, their followers are like family. Oh yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Thank yep. you. Yep. Good deal. When do we get to find out who the headliner is? 
Oh, now he's got the money. Oh, wait. It's a guy, so, his, his name's Matt Strosan. <laughs> so, Matt, thank you. I'll follow up with you on next steps, and you don't have to stick through the rest of this. Yeah. Yeah. I don't feel so rude if you get my money and run. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> we totally understand that. Yeah. Right. And welcome to the husband. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks, you. Thanks. Yeah, you too. I don't know if people still do business cards, but I got business cards. So I'll just hand them out to you right now. I got one. While I'm here. Yep, you already do. Yeah, yeah I know you too. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Right. Yeah. Thank you. You're good. Thanks, Pam. Yeah, thank you. But tell Abby how hard nosed we were and how you just <laughs> I wouldn't will. give up. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll put some fake mascara running down my face. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great night. Thank you. On to Mari with the uh, no 2023 budget. budget. Okay, so uh, discussing with the, with the budget in mind, I just wanted to uh, call two things up. One being, um, I've been reading all of our minutes to make sure that you know, I grant requests and things like that have been followed up on. And I noticed in the March minutes, uh, Julie made a recommendation to transfer $35,000 from trade show grants to the renovation budget. Um, the motion carried, the money has not been transferred. So if you look at the account, we are way overdrafted in renovation. Um, I'm just gonna follow up and see if they can make that transfer happen because it'll just, it'll make the end well, of year budgeting a little easier. When you just referenced there's 21,000 left in trade show, right? Or no, what was that in? Tourism. No, that was tourism. tourism. Okay. Yeah, trade, trade show has, uh, we'll only have about four left okay. after this. Okay. Um, and then that, it, that leftover $8,000 would be used to finish out the interior. And like I said before, we just finally purchased a conference table, guys. So we'll be able to meet in person soon. Um, we're finishing out some furniture. We're talking about blowing up some old historic photos and putting them in the visitor center. How we're, we're talking a lot right now about how we can make the visitor center more of a visitor experience. Um, that will be a growing project over the next couple of years. Um, so I just wanted to let you know that those things will be followed up on as well. And um, as noted before, anything to do with the painting and lead removal will actually be coming out of our general fund balance. So that will be amount of whatever the amount is, is what I'll have to actually go through you, finance, and common council have approved. Um, that actually brings me to another note I just want to discuss before we get into the budget. It was brought to my attention um, that the way the Wisconsin state statute is written, um, is that the city collects the, the hotel tax money and gives it to a commission. The commission signs off on how that money is spent. And I was told last week that it may or may not be illegal for it to function the way that we have it, where it has to be signed off by the commission, then finance, and then city. But the city, once we get the money for the tax commission, the city should have no, like, mm -hmm. no more hands on it. And so I'm actually asking the commission if someone would like to make a motion um, for me to reach out to the city attorney to review the statute and provide an opinion on whether or not we approach the city with basically a new way of doing business. Because right now, everything has to go through the city and it's our money. You're saying the budget. Not just the budget, but the general fund. It's our money. And so, and I, the reason why I feel like we have to go through the attorney is because the way Middleton is set up, the tourism department is within the city government. So I'm not sure if, if it applies to us in the same way. But I, I, was, I was told that the way that we do it is legally against the state statute. And, uh, and I read it somebody, three times and I can't quite figure it out myself. Is so. somebody else in a, in a tourism, a different tourism department or how did you, did you how, who mentioned that? Did you like? um, the person who mentioned it to me is Julia Hartle, who's the okay. executive director of uh, Destinations Wisconsin. Okay, yeah. Because you wouldn't get that same answer from somebody that, <laughs> you know, probably. And I, I think the statute changed like 2014 or like, I think they, so maybe, used to have to go through that process, but it doesn't anymore. I, I don't know. The state, yeah. We have a link on the, the city government page yeah. and it's to the most current. I was reading through it. I couldn't tell one way or another. It, to me, it's not clear whether or not it can or cannot. And so, but I would like to know 
Um, first of all, if I don't have to go through three committees to have every budget and every contract and every request for funds, that would make my life a lot easier yeah. because we have to wait a whole month to do business every time now. Right. And when you think about it, the commission signs off on the budget and then the tourism entity is supposed to be able to run with that. Right, right. And right now, I mean, even my website contract, I had to go through yeah. three committees to have it approved and the budget had already been approved. Yeah. And so if someone would like to make a motion for me to seek uh, advice from the city attorney on whether or not our financial practices are in line with the state statute. Now is your opportunity. I have no problem making that motion. Okay, I'm thank not, you, Kathy. Yeah, Mari, please uh, reach out to the city attorney and make sure that we're doing everything to state statutes as far as the allocation. I second that motion. Thank you. Yeah, All it doesn't Those in favor, yeah. <clears throat> I, I, um, and I'm, and I'm asking this before I'm presenting the budget because it may or may not even, um, affect whether or not we have to turn in a budget August 16th, because if we, if we aren't having to go through the whole process, we could turn in our budget in October. Yeah. Um, which would be a lot easier for us because then we'd have possible, like if we could turn it in later, we'd have the Q3 results for revenue. Yeah. And it'd be easier to forecast next yeah. year. Um, so, okay. One second, I'm just going to write this down. It's a heads up. I have a meeting at six. What? Oh, it's five. It's not five thirty. Um, okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. The, the grant <laughs> uh, discussion five. lasted longer than I was expecting. No. Um, it's not. Okay. Well, I did that. So <laughs> we need all of that conversation so that we can uh, determine everything. So that was great. So okay. The budget. So my overall request right now. Um, I'm just going to go through kind of like the highlights. I'm not going to present you guys the itemized thing. We're going to do that on August 16th. Um, and then, but right now I'm going to tell you where we're increasing and decreasing in major changes. So you can ask questions or tell me no way. But I will, um, first I want to preface this with, and I did bring stuff in case you can ask questions. Um, I want to preface this with, I haven't spoken with Bill Burns in the finance, uh, state finance office yet. We are waiting for the Q2 revenue to be reported so that we can do the proper forecasting for next year. Um, he will also take that into consideration for how much off the top goes to Destination Madison for our partnership, et cetera. And so, and inflation. So anything under wages, utilities, it, that may go up. I'm assuming it's all gonna go up. Um, but right now, the way it is, Laura and I have been working on this on and off for months. Um, the way it is right now, our overall budget request is going to be around $1,230,807. This is actually a decrease of, 30, of more than $32,000 from this year. Um, Reimagining how trade show grants are working and getting rid of the trolley, I was actually able to add some pretty great things into our budget for next year and still say, quoting here, quote marks, saving 32,000, which may get eaten up with the inflation and all the other things. But the good news is we can start doing some really cool things now and we're not adding significantly to our budget. Mm -hmm. And considering everybody is assuming that 23 is gonna be better than 22 financially, I feel like it's going to be a pretty reasonable budget request. So just to give you some highlights here, um, and I'm kind of like been a nerd about this. So if anybody wants to have any like further conversations, I have so many Excel spreadsheets on this. Um, but so in review, um, I'm working with the marketing agency to determine a few line items like the website design, we budgeted 77,000 for that um, and our normal maintenance. Well, it's not going to be completely done in 22. So there's going to be a chunk of that that'll actually be carried over. We're not spending it this year, we'll be carrying it over. I'm trying to find out how much we can get done in 22 and bill out um, so that we can determine 20. I've put $25,000 in there thinking that's about what the last phase would be. Because the, the front end, the, the development is always the most expensive. I'm also looking at doing some really cool things with Discover Wisconsin, um, getting on their platform for some social media postings and that kind of thing that can run in the 30s. If we did an actual commercial on there, there you know, on their site, it's up to 60. But I want to wait to do something like that when Stonehorse Green is more um, established 
and possibly uh, if the cross country ski trails are more established oh, in the lodge, yeah. we can do like aerial footage oh, and things. Yeah. And the way that they work is they come to your community and they're based in Madison. They come to your community throughout the year and, and take video footage. And so they just collect it and then release that following year. So I'm just kind of looking at that and playing with it and discussing it with our, um, our lead marketing person at BNL who has been doing a lot of my digital placements just to make sure that it's, it's worth the money. If we don't spend it on that, I'm thinking we should uh, actually pay to have someone do a professional visitor center video on the history of Middleton and the depot so that it, it would be a visitor experience type of thing. When you come in, you can press play and watch like a short video. And then that way it wouldn't even matter who's working in the depot that day, there's, there's information there. Um, and some other increases would be to the supplies line. Um, I'm actually budgeting for two standing desks. We bought all three at the same time and one died. So it's too big of an expense not to budget for if they both die on me next year. So I put them in there, but if we, if we don't have to buy any, I won't touch it, I promise. Um, building and maintenance, it used to be $7,500, so I'm bringing it back up to that. Um, it might have to increase a little bit more because we're expanding janitorial services to the back of the, the house now, and we're getting quotes on that. So um, just to let you know, uh, mileage I'm bringing back to pre-pandemic numbers. Training and travel, I'm actually keeping it at the 21 um, rate, which was like around 12000 to 16000 which is significantly less than pre-pandemic but we don't think that we're going to surpass that. Research, I'd like to increase um, to, from 10,000 to 34,000, because I want to um, do a new three-year strategic plan by a third-party source. So I wouldn't contract our marketing agency for this. And I put 20,000 in there as a holding because people told me it was going to be roughly that. Could be less, but roughly. I'm increasing the gas budget because we only have 500 bucks in there and we've already blown it. Um, legal fees I'm increasing because we've already surpassed that this year and we've got contracts and trademarking still continuing next year. Big changes, the trade show grant program, we're dissolving it. Um, that's going to come up later in the, um, the agenda, but we're dissolving it as is. And then we're going to kind of rewrite some guidelines for that. We're keeping the budget line and we budgeted for five or six of what we think are wants to go to and adding an additional 15 grand in there for future partnerships. Because Angela Wolf with GF has um, expressed interest. You know, we've had some people, uh, Corey has expressed interest, but we have to rewrite the guidelines. For one, they haven't actually been reviewed in a really long time. And two, we need to make sure that they're following the, the current statutes. And I found out we need to update that. Um, What's GF? Yeah. There's the a new hotel management company okay. for oh, okay, um, the one that's Fort Erin, okay. Hilton, yeah. and okay. residents. Um, tourism grants, uh, we're raising that up to 35,000. So we can offer more. And um, we're, I put a cap on there for five grand, but if we have a group, I think we gave 20 or something for the hockey. So, I mean, if we have a group where we're like, this is really worth bringing in more, we can, we can look through our different accounts for things. Um, destination partnerships, I'm bringing up to 69. And just so everybody knows, before the pandemic, it was over 88. Um, and so these are also things I wanted to bring up to you. If you think these are too low, I could add more to tourism grant and partnership grant because right now I'm still technically below what we asked for last year. Well, I have a question on the destination partnership. One of the line, one of the things you mentioned there was uh, if people want to use a trolley for like a Middleton tour, mm -hmm. is that that's not developed yet? What the tour would look like and who would, who would no? Take in in my, in my mind, it would be like we want to give people, we want to drive people around Middleton and take them to. But you would, you know, to have somebody tell them about. Middleton. Oh no! Like that's not what if they want to, if they want to use that money to hire someone, that's great. But it would be money that we give them for that project. We would any, not be on the bus when they talked about the. Middleton experience or whatever, and training people to do that. That, it, that's, that takes a special person to know how to do right. that. And this is all stuff that we will flesh out later. Okay. Um, because, I mean, the, pro, the it hasn't been developed yet. Okay. But we wanted to make sure that the money was there. Mm -hmm. um, 
And actually, I mean, if you wanted, how long do I have that with me? I think I budgeted for 10 transportation. Um, so 10 events could apply for a four hour transportation okay. cost. And again, I haven't spoken about your bus yet. So right now I'm thinking mm -hmm. that's roughly what a trolley would cost. But one of my questions to the commission would be, could we open that up to, so you need to shuttle people back and forth to whatever, well, we can provide some funds for that because your hotel doesn't provide that. Mm -hmm. So we can talk about how uh, further into the criteria later on, because yep. that's, that's part of that. Um, I think that's, those are the biggest things for what the budget would be. Um, and if anyone has any other questions, I did bring this so I could tell you what we budgeted for exactly in 22 versus what I'm asking for in 23. But if you guys are okay with the overall number and the direction, if there's anything you think we should add more money to, like if you think I should expand tourism grants more, um, we, can, we can talk about that. What I'm kind of doing right now too is I'm highlighting anything where if Bill comes back and says, we really do need to pare it down because this year ran at a deficit, like we don't know what Q4 is in for, right? Then, um, you know, maybe I ask the Discover Wisconsin thing that, you know, I, I have certain things highlighted that I can pull that won't affect operations. I mean, I had, to, with. I had to do it last year. Last year, I found out in February that like 38 grand was fixed from my budget and I didn't know. So I had to ask Iowa. We didn't, we didn't market in Iowa because I had that money was all gone. those Iowans. Yeah. And this is a market I really want to get back into, guys. So I added into marketing this year. So, um, so anyway, this doesn't require a vote from anybody, but I'm opening it up for discussion. You can think about it. You can call me later if you want to talk more about some of the direction or what we're adding to it or what you think good ideas are. Um, the Tuesday or whatever day we decide to meet, but the August 16th um, meeting when we have to approve the budget, I can go through things as detailed as you want them to be. Um, you just need to let me know what you expect. Um, well, we have, I think for me, since I'm so new, you know, like you said, the comparison, like here's where we were in, you know, 2022, 20, 2021. Is that all I can online? So it, I don't think it's online, but I do have, I found the approved budget. I mean, of course I have this year's and I think I found the approved budget on SharePoint for 21 okay. and 19, because I was looking at pre-pandemic. So I know I found 19. 19. Okay. Yeah. Cause that really is. Um, yeah. And I mean, well, and we, we can't budget for 19 because we won't have that revenue stream, but um, it would be great if we were back in 2019 numbers in 2020. But it would just, but I yes. think for, yeah. I can totally um, provide that to you. Okay. I can just email it to you. That would be great. Thank you. So my only thought is it's easier to uh, reduce the budget than, you know, so if we're already starting lower, I mean, if you're solid with that number, that's fine. If you, well, I just, I didn't want to give you guys sticker shock because there are definitely places where I'm like, I could totally add money to this, especially in the grants, um, just to provide more opportunities. And I mean, maybe that's a discussion with Jim. Yeah. Like, what, what are you seeing? Some of the trends are on what other destinations mm -hmm. can offer people. Um, and, and when we go through that later, I would love everybody's opinion. And again, you don't have to provide it tonight. We don't have to vote on this tonight. The guidelines don't have to be secured until probably like October, November, when we want to start letting people apply for things. Mm -hmm. um, but I would love people's feedback on whether or not they think the cap is okay, whether or not they think the criteria I'm suggesting is okay. Um, Laura has already changed a few things because she's an actual meeting planner and she went through and was like, um, I think you need to raise this or you need to move this. And so I welcome everybody's feedback on that. Um, you know, Corey, who has hotel experience and Jim, I mean, please. And if that's me coming and buying you coffee and sitting down and, and picking your brain, I'd love it. I was going to just talk, but I'll take the free coffee. <laughs> <laughs> well, so meeting planner, one of the things I had a question, you know, you have certain dates, you know, like every quarter that you want people to submit. So that was a suggestion from Julie. Okay, um, I just wanted to see where that was because, Yeah, and we can get there when we're talking about that. Okay. So for the budget, 
Does anybody have anything that they have questions about or want me to add? Um, oh, there it looks like there's someone in chat. I just put a chat in because I threw my video off. You can ignore it. Oh, okay. Unless um, there's somebody else in there, it's probably just me. I'm sure it's profound. Otherwise, <laughs> email me or call me um, because I, I mean, I will be finalizing okay. as close to the final product as possible. But as Kathy put, especially if I have to continue going through finance and common mm -hmm. council, they're not going to let me add things later. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that Kathy made a good point. Like, it's always easier to decrease. And, and I just in my experience, I guess, with, with Julie in the past, you know, it's kind of like put your wish list together and, and see what you come out with. So really, though, it's it's up to you, I think, on what you guys think that you might need. Um, you know, it's always easy to up a grant, you know, category like for the hotels, because, you know, if you don't use it, then it just goes back to the general, you know, at the end of the year. Yeah. So um is there anything we don't I mean, I, for okay so i i think that's maybe would be my opinion um but i don't i i guess i don't know it's so hard to tell because like next year is supposed to be really good but so was 2022 and granted 2022 was better but um who knows if we'll be back to where we were in 23 so it's it's really hard to say i think your approach of having your I guess I always said that you'd want wish. So like the things behind the scenes, not something that you pre present for, but if you, you know, you shoot for here and then, you know, like this is, these are the first things that I can cut. Let me get the second Sherry has it labeled like Yeah. That. Yeah. It sounds like you have. They're highlighted. Like yeah. yeah. My, my, my babies <clears throat> that I keep having to cut every year. <laughs> yeah. But um, the fact that we got rid of the trolley has allowed us to add quite a few things. And, and part of that is, bringing some of these things closer to the pre-pandemic budget line. I mean, once once we get rolling again, um, it'll be a lot easier to bring those back up. And I mean, and I'm hoping that they will. Right now, I mean, will we have enough business to require it to be at pre-pandemic levels? Or are we thinking that's how we get it to pre-pandemic mm -hmm. levels? That's what I'm um, I mean, it's just kind of, in my mind, it's like strolling jazz. We have to we have to put out some money in order to see any kind of a result here. So People I'm happy choice with of where to go. Grants. You know, you want to make sure that they you're doing. I will. This way. I will definitely put that in. Increasing grants. It's an easy thing to defend because it's money that's helping us make money. So all right. So that's just where I'm at. Call me. Email me. Stop on by, um, and we can talk about this a little bit more. Um, I will try to send you guys agenda packets way earlier. I found out I had to post it 24 hours in advance and I got it up at 26. Um, last week was fire. It was everywhere. Um, but I promised to get this up earlier so that you guys have a little bit more time. And again, like if you if you love budgets and you want to talk to me about it, I'm I'm free anytime. <laughs> Just to get the reports and I already have questions. Sounds good. Um, so that's all I have on the budget. So we can actually, so the next few um, line items, uh, trade show grant, we kind of talked about this. And I don't even think I need a vote actually. Um, we're just dissolving the program as is. And we're going to hopefully rebuild that back up um, on a partnership level. And we're going to continue out through the rest of the year. And uh, because I, I believe Corey still has at least one more show. And then next year, we're going to open it up for new partnership experiences. And then in some cases, Laura won't be able to go. And so we're definitely going to look for a partnership. And I was actually discussing something with Destination Madison last week. And they were wondering, like, is there something that they might be going to where we can't we could pay for part of the registration fee and they would bring all of our stuff. And that could be a really good way for us to piggyback on some of the things that we just don't have the manpower to get to. Um, especially, you know, uh, they, they do a lot of things with travel writers uh, too. So it's not just group, okay. uh, group tours. And so um, we, can, a, we can discuss that yeah. further too. But Laura's on to start going to trade shows. Yep. I have a question um, for the next items, like the next four or five. Does the commission need to approve any of that? Because we're following 
the city definitions as the tourism commission, which you guys would write, correct? Or am I off on that? Hold on, I'm not sure I understood that question. So like any, like, so you, for the next, um, what is it, items? The tourism grant mm -hmm. definitions and definitions. Uh, yeah, def like basically item two, three, four, and five, I don't know if the commission needs to approve those technically because those are guidelines that the city furnishes. I, I don't know, maybe Kathy, maybe I'm They wrong. do not furnish it. The city did not furnish these. Mm -hmm. These are created by the tourism department. Okay. And city attorney. Yeah, they aren't approved yet because we're in the, we're in the workshop. Okay. Um, so so what, what these are right now, and the reason why it has draft stamped all over it, these are very early versions. Um, what Julie did was she took the, the old guidelines and just kind of revamped and clarified, but I'm rewriting a lot of them. So for instance, the destination partnership grants, creating three complete different categories, adding in that meeting planner incentive category and defining out some of the others a little bit. Um, I'm trying to make some of them a little bit more broad too, so that if somebody wants to come and like they want to host an event at the Hilton and they need to they need, um, you know, sponsorship money for a speaker, well, destination partnership grant can cover that type of thing. But also, to, so tourism grants, and I was talking to Corey about this, it sounds like they initially became a grant fund to try to get business here. And then we had so many repeats that we kind of reworked what it meant and turned it into more of a marketing grant. So that repeat, um, events could keep applying for it and then it kind of had a two thing and i'm bringing it back to kind of more of its original version but including market so you can you can apply for a tourism grant now for development or marketing so if you need to market your event great if you need if you just need an incentive to bring your event here to pay for you know a, mm -hmm. um, you know a talent or whatever you can but it does have an added uh, portion in there that none, uh, no grant funds coming from our department can be used on facility fees or catering, except the only exception is a meeting planner incentive can use it for catering for coffee breaks and board luncheons, which is part of the incentive program that you can apply for. And that of course would probably be catered at the hotel, right? Mm -hmm. But otherwise you can't apply for a grant and then use it to pay for the hotel. Um, I'm pretty sure that wouldn't follow the statute. So, but you can use it for marketing, you can use it for the transportation, you can use it for a speaker. Um, or, and also I put, you can't put, uh, you can't use it toward merchandising, especially if you're gonna sell merchandise, right? Mm -hmm. So those were, I mean, but if you're reading through it, you think I'm off base on something, let me know. Um, if you think that uh, something is too broad, or maybe I'm not tight, you know, I need to tighten it up, or maybe, you know, I'm not being as inclusive as I should be for different kinds of meetings. Um, I was just trying to make it easier to explain to hotel, um, hotels and event planners, because I work here and I was having a hard time clarifying what the different uh, grant sponsorships could do because I feel like they've morphed a lot over the years. And, um, and this, I think, will also be easier from a data um, aspect to track. So if we know that this is how this grant is being uh, spent and this is how it's uh, and how many people are applying for it, how successful is it and how popular is it versus the other grants? So maybe in future years, this is the grant we have to put more money into or this is the one that we have to. So it'll be easier from a data standpoint to to track its success and also its use um, if we have it. I think more tailored to what it's going to be specifically used for. Um, I still kept it as two different mark, um, account lines. I'm not adding account lines. Um, and one of the nice things about that is if we get people who apply for a ton of meeting planner incentives and hardly any development incentive grants, it's all the same bucket. Mm -hmm. So we can give a bunch of meeting planner incentives that year um, without having to borrow from another account line. Again, I welcome all feedback. <laughs> and I didn't give you any time really to read this. And so please email me, call me, whatever. Um, once we get 
what I would call more of a final version. I'll present that to you guys and then we can vote on accepting that. And from there, I will recreate a new application form. Right now, I, I feel like it's the same app for both, right? Yes. Um, I will create two because the destination partnership grant now has three subcategories. And I feel like if we had tried to do one grant app for all of them, it'll be 17 pages long. Confusing. Mm -hmm. And so, and especially since the tourism grant only applies for overnight stay generating events. So Stonehorse Green can't even apply for a tourism grant going forward. They can apply for the development <laughs> portion <laughs> of the destination <laughs> partnership grant. Yes. Um, and that also will, in a way, also help us protect money too. So if we have a lot of money left over in tourism grants, but we have a lot of little events asking us for money, but they don't qualify, then we can keep that money for the, the events that are, have yet to apply. One question I have is it's called out in a the couple of different grants is if a, if something will be happening at a particular hotel, it's like Jim's, that he would have to recruit himself. Yes. And we have to figure out making sure we have the right quorum mix if, if that happens and yes. how that affects her. And that's legal jargon that the city attorney will have to approve, but um, it's actually, uh, it's a law. Right, but we have to make sure we get And it wasn't in the previous happen. guidelines. We're just making sure that it goes in. Yeah. And I might not have it worded perfectly, but um, the city attorney will review that. And how I'm, why I'm trying to include that everywhere is right now, you can't apply for a grant because you sit on the commission, but we are required to have at least one hotel right. GM on our commission. And so if, if we put it in writing that we as a commission are acknowledging and accepting that, with the provisions of you're going to step out of the room, you're going to have no part of the discussion, you can't present it, which you weren't before anyway, but <laughs> but it's in writing, then I feel like we could get it approved that way. But otherwise, we are punishing the one person nice enough to serve on our yeah. <laughs> each year. And so I just want to put it in writing and have a, an attorney sure. sign off. And so we're covered on all bases. Okay. And so, and Really, that's more for the trade show grant aspect, but I'm including it in every single one of our grants now so sure. that it's consistent. Um, and hopefully we won't have to rewrite these for a very long time. So we don't have to vote on any of this. Just please read it and get back to me. And, you know, let's try to get it approved the next I, couple I months. thought they were well, I thought it was well done. And, it, you know, the changes here that are, I think were very, very well thought out. Um, I probably rewrote destination partnership grants three times. I'm not kidding. I just threw it out at one point. So it's, 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 it's new. I mean, this is we're going to have a. You know. Well, and I for me too, and one of the things I really need Jim to look at and Kate is uh, minimums too. Like, am, is my minimum too high, too low? Like, am I going to be excluding a lot of really good business by having it there? Like, I I need people to to weigh in. So. And um, I'll be interested to, to see what Kevin says from, you know, he's an attraction. We consider yeah. Capital Brewery to be an attraction. Yeah. And so from an attraction standpoint, are we being inclusive enough? Exactly. That is um, a good question, making sure that. Yeah. Are. And and we always have the ability to say no. So just because we fund, you know, one one venues event one year like I'll use Kiva they're going to try to restart their their summer series this year they only have one but next year I think they're gonna have multiples they've never you know they've never asked for grant money but it's actually a very cool thing mm -hmm. and and it's the type of event that could bring people from out of town sure. because they're they're going to have to stay the night after that thing gets over right they might not want to drive two hours home. I need to travel <laughs> so I went to one last year and it was awesome. And part of it is there are no mosquitoes because it's astro turf. It's big. Yeah. Oh, oh nice. Nice. So you're outside after dark. I can't eat alive. It was <laughs> so good. And think but, about that. But but again, like you know, that's that's an event that maybe we're lighting. like we should open this up to a, a grand <laughs> mosquito free yeah. concert. But Kiva might be you know hosting a kids club, and we're like, nope, that that doesn't qualify. So the, the nice thing about having this commission is you can say no to things. Mm -hmm. Criteria gives you an opportunity to say no. That's, that's kind of where I, I come from on it. We, um, because otherwise you'd have to say yes to everybody because you set a precedent, right? So having a tight criteria gives you an option to say no 
when you really don't believe that it's going to be a tourism generating event or a community development mm -hmm. event. Um, and so any holes that you guys see, please point out. Because I don't want to, I don't want to learn them on the fly. <laughs> well, you did list, list some events that happened in the city, right? If I did. Well, and I was using, Julie supplied like that bullet list um, on it's definitions safe. where she was giving examples. She, she provided that and it was wonderful because it gives you a really clear, in, you know, idea in your head on yeah. what, what that could encompass, you know, like development is more like Stonehorse Green cross country trails, that kind of well, thing. That's another, it yeah, could be more of a Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And uh, in fact, I have a meeting with Gary next week to talk about where cross country trails are going. Um, so yeah, anyway, cool. that's really all I have guys on that. I just, I want your eyes on it. I want your opinions. Um, there's no hurt feelings. If something needs to be completely thrown out and rewritten, it's fine. Um, you see that. Well, <laughs> it's fine up to a point because I'd really like them approved by October because I'd like to be able to send out the application form to all the hotels and say, this is now new and have an opportunity to talk to them and, um, about how we're expanding the opportunities. Yeah. So, and that will be the next step after this is approved and everything is online. Laura and I will be going out to hotels and educating them on the new opportunities so that they could share that with meeting planner and maybe putting together like a one sheeter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to need something yeah. short and sweet, um, especially since it's new. Yeah, um, because that's they'll be the first people to be able to tell a meeting planner that this is available. So, okay. other than that, guys, I feel like we're done. I just need a motion. Oh. Be done to be done. <laughs> yeah, I think we're to the end. Oh, do you want to talk about next meeting at all, though? Oh, yeah. Um, so for the next meeting, I guess I should put that in minutes. Next meeting will be budget approval. I need a quorum. So I will send out a doodle poll to make sure that we will have at least four people available on August 16th to sign off. And if you aren't, then give me your feedback beforehand and we will. We will okay. discuss it during the meeting. Okay. Um, since I know you're not going to be there, I'll probably just reach out to you beforehand. To say, like, what do you, what do you need? Um, uh, we'll revisit the tourism grants. Um, if I receive zero feedback from you guys, then I'm just going to clean it up and give it to you. And then we'll, we'll see how that goes. Okay. Um, painting for the depot. I will follow up with a Zoom special meeting. Um, and so we may or may not have anything to discuss on August 16th, but I'll just, I'll put it as a placeholder. Okay. And I don't think, oh, um, and I will provide an update on the marketing manager position on oh, how yeah, that's going. Okay. We, we posted the job last Monday. I am, I approved yesterday to, um, kind of like boost it. I didn't realize that it hadn't been. Um, apparently we had to provide the funds. And I was like, yes, go, go, go forth, please. And so he's going to put some money behind the job posting now. And if we need to, we'll extend the deadline. Um, I want to have at least three or five applicants to you know, actually consider before going forward. Um, so if you know of anybody, let me know um, or send it out, right? Right now it's posted on our website, the city's website. Um, visit Middleton's LinkedIn page, also mine. But, um, Destinations Wisconsin is going to post it. Did we get it? Did we? I don't think I, I don't know if I emailed you. I'll just, I'll just look at the link on your site. Okay. We'll yeah, go with my site because my site has pictures. The visit? Yeah, okay. visit Middleton. Um, I think actually it might be posted under news. Okay, that might be the easiest way. Um, I can do that too. Um, but mine has pictures, so if you share it on social, you'll get a photo that pops up too. So it looks better. Feel free to copy and paste what I put on LinkedIn and put it on your social, that kind of thing. Um, right now we have no applicants, but it has only been open for a week. I mean, it took me the day before this job was posted for me to finally get my application in. <laughs> yeah. So some people are slow. Um, actually, both times I applied like within 24 hours of the job posting. 
uh, we're not asking a ton as far as a portfolio for this either. So uh, like there'll be more asked uh, once they actually. So I'll report back on that position on whether or not we have to extend the deadline or did extend the deadline. Um, do we have any other business that needs to be brought up? Painting, marketing manager, grants, budget. Budget will be the huge part of the oh, thing. I'm gonna tell you, you were thinking of a software program that would help with the- Oh, I, I forgot to call that out. So yeah. I did increase the software budget. Right now I put a hold of 25,000. Um, this is something that you guys will definitely have to you know, consider for the approval of the budget. Um, we're looking at software that will remove city permitting from the tourism department. So it'll take the place. Of Not, immediately. <laughs> Not immediately. Not immediately. Laura will have to do a lot of work baby on the front end. Steps. Yeah, baby steps. That seems like a weird oh, yeah. It is. Everybody it is. acknowledges it should not be in our department, but nobody, but nobody can it. afford to hire and, a yeah, part-time person all. to do it. So. We used to have a part-time person that did it, and that person's job was position was eliminated before we were hired. Yeah. So we, uh, we're we looking at software because it'll be Less expensive than another employee, and it will give it to the new thing. Oh, I bet he would love that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think people don't realize that it's like half your job in the yeah, summer. He's half time. Oh, at least. Um, well, we'll so, just get an update on that. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll yeah, yeah, provide that, an update. Yeah, I'm getting more software. quotes and doing more research. So, and that's something we like to pull the trigger on as soon as possible. And maybe we can work it out with the vendor to pay it in 23, but start the process this year. Have you reached out to Drew at all? Drew Mortimer? No. And that yeah, after my discussion fun. today with one of the companies, I think he's actually who I should have a conversation with because I think in talking to these companies, it, it is going to be a little sticker shock, but he's like, if you talk to the whole city, a bunch of other apartments may be able to use the software too to streamline some of their processes. Yes. It might not just be tourism. So like, yeah, there's, it does, there's yeah. And then there might, uh, that it, everybody acknowledges that it shouldn't be in the tourism department yet tourism's paying for the software. To well, it. just to, we're, we're hoping to pay for like the initial like sign on with the software. And then eventually we would like the annual subscription to fall elsewhere. Mm -hmm. But we know that in order to get it out of our department, we're going to have to put a lot of skin well, in the game. a lot of the legwork so. on this and if some a vendor wants to come in and give a demo you invite all the different yes. department heads in yeah but you could possibly think that we'd be able to utilize it yeah and there might be something that would uh, module that would add on to something we have now who knows and that's where i've yeah i've learned that we are already a customer of one of these companies and i was like oh that's yeah good information to have so yeah so make sure you're digging the loop right now yeah it's it's going to be a process yeah um, especially after the first the first quote we got was so beyond what we could afford. I could hire a person for a year. For yeah. That. Yeah. Um, but the See annual subscription is the no. part that, that <laughs> eventually pass on to us. But what it comes down to is um, it's been in our department before Julie, and it doesn't look like there's any opportunity to remove it. So I feel like we need to just do this. We need to present a solution so yeah. because people. Yeah, she does. Yeah, there's not going to during the pandemic when she couldn't go out on the road. It it wasn't as bad of a thing, right? Well, there weren't any events not, either. <laughs> not, not the thing maybe that brings joy to your life, but it wasn't conflicting with your job. And right now, it's 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 starting to conflict. Yeah. So if if we want to utilize our professional meeting planner in yeah. the way that we have hired her. We need to get permitting out of our office, and this might be the only way we can do that. Good segue for that. As you're a professional meeting planner, are you part of an organization that you could, like when you're talking about the, the destination grant and how, run that by, you know, what the meeting planners would look for? Or yeah, that? actually, I could. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm part of ESPA. It's an event service professionals association. Um, I can also... I, like and that would be some good, I don't know, do you think that'd be good feedback to hear what they think about what you're proposing? And if they, Or we could just ask what other destinations have Yeah, done. that yeah. would be a better question, actually. Uh, rather than sending them our I draft. think that's we, right. We that's are a better question. unique in the grants that we offer compared to most. Yeah, well, I think but, Julie did some research before she presented her first, her first yeah. Draft, draft everybody. Yeah, yeah. Um, organization might have some people that you could just pick their brains a mm -hmm. little bit. But anyway, I feel like we are through the agenda. So if anybody wants motion to adjourn. Mm -hmm. Second. All those in favor. Aye. Aye.
Thanks, everybody. Nice seeing everybody. Thank Can you be you. up at the golf outing tomorrow? I sure will. My right. car yeah. is Bye, ready to go. All right. Are you? All right, awesome. All right. Have a nice night, everybody. Bye. Bye.